Hi there, my name is Andy Schatz and I'm making a game called Monaco. Uh, it's been a little while since I did one of these video logs. I figured I'd do another one now, seeing as how we're uh, starting to wrap up some of the network play stuff. Um, I wanted to tell you all about uh, some of the tricky stuff that goes on behind network code in today's modern games. Um, before I started working on the network code, uh, my experience was mostly uh, my, my network programming experience was mostly on the UI side of things, which is a lot different from the actual gameplay side of things. In the, in the UI side of things, you need to make sure that every single message that you are sending across the network gets to its intended target. For instance, if someone quits the game, you need to make sure that that message actually gets through. Um, or if the, the host is starting the game, for instance, that message also needs to get through. Um, but when you're dealing with gameplay, um, not every message has to get through, and you don't want to, to um, require that every message gets through because on poor internet connections, or really any internet connection, um, you expect what's called packet loss. What this means is that certain messages don't get through, and, and uh, you really have to code your game such that that's acceptable. Um, so, for instance, um, uh, you send a, tend to send a lot of messages about the uh, player's positions, right? Um, you don't want to force the game to re require that every, every single one of those player position messages gets through um, because you'll end up slowing down the network and, and slowing down the game. Um, so how do you deal with this in a modern game? Um, in, in the past, uh, in my, my earlier versions of the network build of Monaco, um, the, the version that I did, I actually wrote the first network code in the game a year and a half ago. Um, and in that version, I was using a combination of reliable and unreliable messages. So the reliable ones are the ones that you know are going to get through. And basically, the way a reliable message works is you keep sending the message until you receive an acknowledgement from the person you're sending it to that they had actually received it. Um, so, uh, but then an unreliable message is one that you just fire off, you just send off, and you don't worry about whether or not it actually gets there. Um, so in, in the previous iteration of Monaco, I was uh, using a combination of these reliable and unreliable messages. Um, and I tried to tweak and tune that as best as I could, but uh, I never really got to the part to the point where I felt like um, the player the player really shouldn't feel like they're playing on a network game if they're playing on anything under a 200 millisecond internet connection. Um, they should they should really feel like they're just playing a local game. Um, and it was very difficult to get the game to feel smooth and feel like it's actually just a local game. Um, so I did some research. Uh, and as it turns out, um, it's been a long time since games actually worked like that. Um, back f uh, with Quake World, um, John Carmack, of course, in invented, I, I, I believe he invented, um, a new method of doing this. And I've read up a fair amount on this. Um, Valve has actually published a couple of articles um, about how the source engine works as well. So if you're interested in... in uh, the nuts and bolts of this of uh, the source engine's network architecture, uh, you should look those articles up on the internet. Um, that's where I got a lot of the source of my my stuff. I've also uh, been reading a blog um, called Gaffer on Games, I believe it is. So if you look up the history of uh, uh, network multiplayer games um, on Gaffer on Games, um, you'll find another really interesting article. I'll post links to these as well. Um, so at any rate, the main key, the, the really tricky key for making the game feel uh, seamless, feel smooth, um, while never having to deal with um, reliable messages, is this. It's really kind of interesting, actually. Um, say I'm the host, right? I'm the one who determines player positions. Um, the client doesn't get to control his own position. The client just estimates his position and sends his player inputs back to the host. And the host actually moves the character and then sends the client um, information about where his character actually is. Um, right? So, so um, on the client, I'm actually um, I'm, I'm just sending inputs and then I'm 
pretending like I know where I'm pretending like I know where the um, my character is, and so visually I just display the character in the spot where I think he should be. Um, now, if the host decides that he should be in a different place, um, I'll see my character snap or rubber band over to the correct position um, when when he sends me a positional update. Um, so, at any rate. Um, uh, the longer your your lag, the longer your latency, um, the more time there is in between the input that I send as the client over to the host, and then the host has to actually move the character and then send an update back to the client. So latency refers to the actual round trip time uh, between the two, um, between the client and the host. Um, so um, here's here's the here's the tricky part though. Um, the host, um, rather than just sending updates, uh, rather than just sending a single positional update and having some of them occasionally get lost, the way that modern games do it is they actually just spam the client all the time with all of the updates um, that they've that they uh, have have created over time since the last time the client acknowledged receiving one of those updates. So if the client acknowledges receiving an update at say 2 minutes and 11 seconds and 32 milliseconds um, it sends sends that acknowledgement to the host and the host at that point sends all every uh, like 20 times a second is going to send all of the positional updates all of the game updates everything since that last acknowledgement and so that amount of information that the host is sending is getting larger and larger and larger and larger until the next time the client sends another acknowledgement and that beginning cuts off again and then it gets larger and larger and larger and larger and then the beginning cuts off again um, so it's kind of interesting it's actually you couldn't have done this early in back on 56k modems but on uh, modern internet connections um, what you can do is you're basically spamming or shotgunning all of the information since the last acknowledgement by the client um, and that gets larger and larger over time um, and then gets shortened when the client sends it, um, or when the client re sends the acknowledgement. Um, so at any rate, that's the uh, the basics of how that works. Um, you also still have to do a lot of interpolation and extrapolation of player positions in order to get them to feel right. Um, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on there, um, but that's the basic foundation for all of the the, uh, the network architecture in Monaco. Anyways, that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll post those links in the description of the video. Um, and uh, that's it. All right, my name's Andy, and I'm making a game called Monaco. Thanks for watching. Bye.